when the water in the Sea of Galilee is drying up and the state of Israel has ruled the world for a day which is like a week then in Sahih Muslim we are told a Muslim ruler will die and there will be disagreement concerning succession and then a man is going to come out of Mecca his name will be my name and his father's name will be my father's name said the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam he'll have a broad forehead and a large nose and he'll be known as Al-Mahdi and he'd hurry from, from Medina to Mecca as he approaches Mecca people are going to come out to him so this has to be a well-known person not some obscure non-entity a well-known person when the people of Mecca come out to him they'll force him to accept the bay'ah the oath of allegiance which legitimizes the leadership of the Amir al-Mu'mineen bay'ah he will accept the bay'ah at the Kaaba and then proclaim himself to be al-Mahdi it is only then that you would know that al-Mahdi is here so stop asking these foolish questions is he born already? is he in Lebanon? or maybe in Indonesia? that's foolishness Al-Mahdi cannot emerge until Israel has become the ruling state in the world. Al-Mahdi cannot emerge until Dajjal has completed his mission. Al-Mahdi cannot emerge until this state of Israel has ruled the world for a day which is like a week. Al-Mahdi cannot emerge until the water has dried in the Sea of Galilee. So stop these foolish questions. He proclaims himself to be the Mahdi. There are going to be eclipses of the sun and the moon that month. But there have been eclipses of the sun and the moon in the past. But after he proclaims himself al Mahdi, he's going to be attacked from an army, with an army from Sham. That army comes down to the south, and armies are under the control of governments. And when that army is between Medina and Mecca going down south, the earth is going to open and swallow that army. That is the sign of all signs. Beyond the shadow of a doubt, validating the claim of this man that he is the Mahdi. Hmm? But Mecca has never been a Shia city. Never. And Mecca will not be a Shia city at that time. And Makkah will not come out to give allegiance to a Shia. And so you have to be living on the moon to believe that the Mahdi is going to be Shia. We do not say this to embarrass the Shia or to be uncharitable to them or to hurt their feelings in any way. This is just factual analysis. When the earth opens and swallows that army then on that day those from the world of the Shia who accept him as the Mahdi and follow him are our brothers in faith when the army is swallowed then the Mahdi is going to be attacked by another army and this is now an army of the Quraysh an army of the Kalb and remember that armies are under the control of governments. The Mahdi will defeat this army. And when an army is defeated, that is the end of Saudi Arabia. Goodbye to bad rubbish. Goodbye to bad rubbish. Let it be recorded in my book tonight. Let it be recorded in your book tonight. Goodbye to bad rubbish. The most monstrous betrayal of Islam ever committed in history, committed by those who control that state. Now Darul Islam is restored. Yeah, this is Islam, not that. And let it be clear that there are so many Salafi Muslims in Saudi Arabia in prison 
because they too are struggling for the same thing that I am struggling to liberate that land. Let it be clear that there's a man like Sheikh Safar al Hawali who is at the forefront intellectually, spiritually, and theoretically. At the forefront. I benefited from his thought. And so do not remain with this sectarian conflict and describe that masjid, Salafi masjid, this one Sunni masjid, this one Indonesian masjid, that one Malay masjid. I thought the masjid was the house of Allah. Has it changed? <laughs> when Darul Islam is restored in the Arabian Peninsula, this is now the most dangerous and potent of all threats to the state of Israel. Dajjal will now attack. He's now in a day which is like our day. And so we see him, a Jew, a young man, powerful, built curly here. But I'm not saying anything about his eyes because you understand the hadith about the eyes now. The Prophet ﷺ pointed his hands to the east 20 times. And he said he's going to come from the east. Jerusalem is northwest. <laughs> when Israel attacked Jamal Abdel Nasser, although Israel is to the east of Egypt, Israel attacked from the west <laughs> and destroyed the Egyptian air force on the ground in the Six Day War. Similarly, Dajjal is not going to attack from the northwest. He attacks from the east. Twenty times, said Muhammad You can come from the east. When he attacks, he's going to be riding on a donkey, which will travel as fast as the clouds, and which is have his ears stretched out wide. I'm going to Perth, inshallah, on Thursday on that donkey. <laughs> and so, we're talking about fighter aircraft. And east of Medina and Mecca is the Saudi Air Force Base, which is now also an American Air Force Base in Dahran. As they attack Makkah and Medina, the angels defend Makkah and Medina. This is there in Sahih Muslim. And the attack is diverted to Damascus. And then the confrontation takes place. Dajjal is outside and the Imam is inside, the masjid. And now history repeats itself. The Jews are rubbing their hands. We got them now. There's no escape. We got them. We have them in our sights now. As someone else was rubbing his hands, as his army was approaching them, and in front of them was the sea, and behind them is the army, and they're rubbing their hands. We got them now. Who was he? Fir'an. And so history repeats itself. But at the last moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Musa alayhi salam, take your rod and strike the water. And then the divine intervention took place, the miracle. And the believers were saved. Now history repeats itself. As the Jews are rubbing their hands, we've got them now, we've cornered them. At that last moment, history repeats itself. The son of Mary comes down with his hands resting on the wings of two angels, 